Welcome to Serving Locally with me, your host, Michelle Dinas, a podcast where we spotlight service in the Longmont and surrounding communities. All right, let's connect. Welcome to today's episode of Serving Locally with me. I am here with Jessica Schultz of Voices for Children, Casa of Boulder County. Um, So I just wanted to say thank you for coming out today and being on the show. And um, we'll just start with um, who are you and what is Voices for Children? Um, Just in a quick overview. Yeah, well, first, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So excited to be here um, and share a little bit more about Voices for Children. So as you mentioned, I'm Jessica. I get to be the development officer with Voices for Children in Casa of Boulder County. And just our mission is to build a healthier community by delivering services, support, and advocacy to children who have experienced trauma. So Mm -hmm. we do serve all of Boulder County, our primary program being our CASA program, um, which is court appointed special advocates. So it's community volunteers who come in and provide really the, just what our mission states, service, support, and advocacy for kids who are either in dependency and neglect cases mm-hmm. or truancy cases. Um, so youth who become involved in the child welfare system are some of the most vulnerable in our community and face some really extreme adversities. So these volunteers become Become a consistent adult for these kids throughout their entire case, which can sometimes last up to 18 months. Mm-hmm. Um, but just someone who is there for them, who can advocate for them um, in regards to education, health, and really just so much more. Can you give us a little bit of a background about the organization? Yeah, Voices for Children in Boulder County started in 1985, but we are a part of National CASA, which started in the late 70s by Judge David Sukup. He was in King County in Washington. Um, It came about because he was making a placement decision for a three-year-old who had experienced abuse Mm -hmm. and he realized he just didn't have enough information to make a decision in the best interest of this child. So Little Brain Child came about for CASA. He made a call out to the community to say, hey, can we have volunteers who are available to advocate for the children? We have so many adults in the courtroom to advocate for the parents and really everyone else involved, but no one really specifically for the child. Mm. So his call to action brought in a lot of success, turned into a nationwide movement. CASA is now in 49 states and there are 18 jurisdictions in Colorado. And then just in the last year, we served a little over 200 kids with about 120 community volunteers. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a lot. That's that's awesome. Yeah. What is your focus at Voices for Children? So our vision at Voices for Children is to ensure that all children have a safe, nurturing environment where they're able to thrive. We work towards this by providing those kids with CASA volunteers who can advocate for them. These volunteers go through pretty extensive training before they're able to onboard. It's a three-week in-person and online training that they go through to really just ensure they have the resources, the tools they need to be successful and provide best interest advocacy for Mm -hmm. those kids. In addition to that, we're realizing that we need a more diverse group of volunteers. So one of our big focuses right now is recruiting more. And in addition to that, volunteers who are representative of the kids we serve. Mm. Just last year in Boulder County, 
um, about 50% of the kids we served were children of color. Mm -hmm. And we realized the importance of having a volunteer and an advocate who maybe looks more like you or has similar lived experiences to you so that you can create stronger connections, more trusting relationships to build that advocacy and really give this child everything they deserve. So in order to uh, fulfill that mission really of ensuring that all kids have a safe um, and nurturing environment where they can thrive, starts with having a more diverse group of volunteers that can advocate for them. That's awesome. So who are you trying to reach with your organization? So because the clientele we serve, the kids, we do get court ordered to have CASA on those cases. So that's not necessarily our target audience. Our target audience is the people who have the capacity to give. So whether mm -hmm. it be volunteering with their time, greatest need, we can only function if we have our volunteers and um, folks who can donate monetarily. So we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization, and we are only able to provide this critical support because of the generosity of our community, whether it be volunteers or donations. Right. What makes the work of Voices for Children Casa Boulder County different than other similar serving organizations? Yeah, so Voices for Children Casa Boulder County is different in that our Casa volunteers are that consistent adult that is not only there to advocate for them, but allows them to just be kids. Mm -hmm. They're put in really difficult situations mm -hmm. at no fault of their own, mm -hmm. and we hear stories about them needing to step up in different ways or almost a little bit of their childhood being taken. So having that CASA involved really allows them time to just be kids. They take them to the library. They take them to swim lessons. They take them to the zoo. Um, so really just opportunities that they might not otherwise have had. So it's more than just an advocate that they just see in the courtroom or... Yes. You know, whatever social work cases, whatever, they yes. are part of their lives. Yes, absolutely. Our CASAs are required to meet with the kiddos at least once a month. Mm -hmm. um, option to also do it virtually, but really to create that relationship so the volunteer can learn more about that, that, that about the child yeah. and what truly is in their best interest. Right. A lot of times we hear from caseworkers in the court that they get so much value from CASA volunteers because they're the ones spending so much time they with the child. Yeah, yeah, there's they some care there. Know. There's relationship there mm -hmm. to see what their the likes, dislikes, and needs are actual. That's, yeah. that's really cool because yeah. the kid can't really verbalize that, I'm sure. Yeah. They don't know what they're you know, what they're looking for. Yeah. And a perfect example um, that I came across the other day, we had a CASA volunteer working with a teen who was involved in a truancy case. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the courtroom, they wanted to address the truancy. Well, the teen didn't have a super close relationship with any of the other adults involved and didn't feel comfortable advocating for their needs in the courtroom. They built that trusting relationship with the CASA where the CASA could then step up and advocate for them. Turns out this teen was being bullied in school, mm. didn't feel safe. This wouldn't have come out otherwise right. because the child didn't feel comfortable advocating for that in the courtroom. As a result, the caseworker and the court has ordered um, therapeutic intervention to work with the student on overcoming the bullying, but they have also now are looking into a transfer of schools yeah. for this teen. So, Yeah, that's really <clears throat> great that they have, they can, that this organization creates that steady you know, person that knows what's going on from, from, from case to case, probably mm -hmm. from family to family, yep. if they're doing from school to school mm -hmm. to see the growth, to see the change, to see the difficulties that they're having. Yeah. Um, that is invaluable. And I, I appreciate that with you guys. Yeah. That's fantastic. Um, so what are your greatest needs as in all 
nonprofits. It's it's volunteer and money I, mm-hmm. is what I'm hearing. Yeah. But um, if this is something that that volunteer base is very much, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it, it's very important yeah. for for the, for the for those kids. Yeah, definitely. Um, beyond the volunteers and monetary needs that all nonprofits do, one of our greatest needs really is community awareness. Mm-hmm. Um, we talk often about how our kids are the next generation; they're the future. Mm-hmm. We need to be there for them. However, kids involved in the child welfare system, yeah. foster care, are often really overlooked mm-hmm. in that area. Um, so bringing more awareness to the work that we do that really supports those kids. I just think there's not enough people in the community that know about it. I hadn't heard from you guys, heard about you guys at all, except for I met you guys at the Unity and Community. Yeah. So I'm really glad that they're that we're doing things like that so yeah. that way we can get to know and that's why I go to those things is to try to dig you people up mm-hmm. so I can get you guys to give you a little bit of space to talk about and get you yeah. get you exposed. Well, in this platform, too, thank you for hosting it mm-hmm. because it just reaches a whole new audience for us yeah. as well. That's what I'm, I'm hoping. So that way it can not only get to the people that want to help, but people that might need the services or just, you know, hey, I might know somebody that you can connect with each other. So, yeah, um, yeah I see that. It's... Uh, it's, I, I'm hoping that, that it's helping somebody <laughs> out there. <laughs> so that's good. I'm um, sure it is. <laughs> um, do you have any events coming up or volunteer opportunities that you guys do like a special thing for? Yeah. So like we talked about, always recruiting volunteers. Our training session has just started. We have a group of 22, which is super exciting wow. and the largest the organization has ever seen. But there's always cases being open. Mm -hmm. So always recruiting volunteers. Our next um, training session starts in April. Okay. Um, Volunteers can and are required to attend a CASA 101, which is an informational session to learn more about the opportunity. So those are held two to three times a month over the lunch hour and at 5 p.m. So whenever really works for potential volunteers to join, all information is on our website at vfcboulder.org backslash volunteers. And then we also have our annual fundraiser, Night of Hope, coming up Mm -hmm. on Thursday, April 11th. It will be at the Lionsgate Event Center um, and really just an event to generate awareness and raise the necessary funds to continue this work. We do have sponsorships available as well um, that they can learn more about on our website. Also, vfcboulder.org backslash Night of Hope. How can people contact and find out more about Voices for Children? So people can visit our website, vfcboulder.org. They can also call our main office, um, contact information on our website, um, or shoot over an email, development at vfcboulder.org. Awesome. And I will, as always, have them in my QR code. Um, in the show notes, so you can check that out. Um, check them out on Facebook and stuff too. Um, yeah, um, is there anything else that you would like to add or just give you some space to talk about something that you just feel passionate maybe that I've missed or that you just you just feel like you need to you need to share to talk a little bit more about? I think that covers it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Sometimes people are like, oh, yeah, we've got this other thing. But, <laughs> you know, so it's like I just want to I want to open the floor up to yeah. um, anything that you feel um, that you want to that you want to share. No, I think that covers it. Wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jessica, for coming yeah. out. And um, if you guys have um, any more questions or anything, let them know. Um, and if you guys know of organizations like this or of any kind that are a nonprofit or just service for the community in any way, please connect with me so we can keep this going. Um, I, I love this. This is a passion project for me and, um, the editing is hard for me, so it (laughs) takes me a while to get these out, but, um, I appreciate all the support and hope that this is, that somebody is, um, getting help or being able to connect with other people through my podcast. So, um, thanks you guys for viewing and thank you, Jessica, for being here and, um, have a great day. Thank you.
Thank you to my guests, my listeners, and my supporters. Serving together, we can strengthen our community. Please like and subscribe. Do all those other things. You know you got to do them. Because that's the easiest way that you can serve right now. All right. Now go. Connect with others and be a blessing.